Hello guys and welcome back to the Equals to Palace TV YouTube channel where today I'm bringing you another li a live stream as obviously we've announced for the second day in a row another new signing with the Polish international Jaroslaw Jak obviously joining um, from a Polish club in the Polish league I'm not exactly sure of the name of the Polish club but obviously he's a Polish international he's come to Palace on a three and a half year deal and obviously the, the fee is undisclosed but if you to believe what's in the media it's believed to be around two million euros so actually even if this doesn't go well as a signing, actually, it's not necessarily a big financial loss purely because it's quite a you know a small about amount of money. But if you are, if there are any of you um, watching on the live stream, then do um, you know comment below uh, with your views on the signing, whether you do think uh, Yak will be a success in the Premier League, and whether you do think yes, he may not be first choice, but whether you think he'd be uh, good for Palace, in, you know, coming up this season. And also, if you are. Um, watching do share the stream as well so we can get as many people onto the stream as well just to sort of get everyone's opinions obviously on the signing and also obviously so I can show you the interview and maybe some highlights and photos um, you know with his signing uh, so far sound is back yeah hello earth changing yeah you were uh, you stuck with me uh, for most of last night uh, thanks for coming back again and tuning in uh, do comment below what you think about this signing, whether you do think it's good for Palace. But as you can see um, on the uh, right-hand side, there's a Twitter feed. So obviously at the moment, the Bristol City um, Man, United, Man City game is going on. So if you do want to keep an eye, it will be on the right-hand side. And obviously, as you can see, on the left-hand side is our new signing, the Polish international Jaroslaw Jak. So do comment below what you think uh, about him as a signing. But just to go over sort of a few things about him, obviously... Obviously, a bit more detail in terms of the deal itself and what this will mean for Palace in terms of what he will bring to the side. So just to go onto the club web website and just read through uh, their statement. So obviously, he's a Polish international. He's signed for Palace from Zagreb Lubin. I think that's how you can say it. Um, Zagreb Lubin. Well, however you pronounce it, that's a Polish club in the Polish league. And obviously, he signed, like I've already said, on a three and a half year deal. And obviously, he's 23 years old, so he's quite young. He's got lots of time to develop. And when you consider, I looked on Wikipedia, he's actually quite a young 23, so hopefully we'll get a few years out of him. And, you know, being young means he's able to develop quite well. Obviously, in terms of international level, he's already got two caps and he made his full debut for the Polish national team last year. And the thing that's excited quite a lot of players in, uh, or quite a lot of people on Twitter, especially uh, Polish Palace fans, is the fact that he's now the first ever Polish-born player to play for Palace, which is quite an achievement, obviously being the first player born in Poland to play for Palace. But in terms of his career, it started in Poland's fourth tier. So obviously he's built himself up to the top tier in Poland. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that team, but Licza Dushnov, whatever that team is called, in 2011, that's where he started his career. He spent a couple of seasons there before he went, obviously went from the fourth division up to the second division uh, to play for Zagi Lubin. And obviously he obviously helped them to... Um, to win the title I believe that is obviously in his first attempt and he obviously went on in his time there to play 78 times for them and obviously the team's known as the Coopers so he played you know about 78 times for the team now this season obviously before he came to join to Palace he made 20 appearances in all competitions obviously as a centre-back you wouldn't expect a centre-back to score but he obviously scored once in that time and actually obviously because he's been playing quite well for his team and because some people have been calling him one of the best uh, central defenders in the Polish league, it obviously meant that he was called up uh, to the national team by the Polish boss, Adam Nawalka, and obviously handed him his senior debut in November uh, in the friendlies against Uruguay and Mexico. So he may not necessarily have so much experience in the fact that he's only played these friendlies, but the fact that he's still got a bit of experience on the international level, compare that with some of our other players, actually, I think that will go quite well together, the fact that we've got players now who've got quite a lot of experience. So do comment below. Um, you know what you think of his signing whether you do think he'd be a good signing uh, for Palace but I personally think it's a very low risk one because we haven't spent a lot of money he's still young and actually based on what I've heard Polish fans say in the fact that he's actually one of the best um, central defenders in the Polish league it does look quite promising so do comment below um, what you think about the signing and also put any questions in there uh, as well that you might want to ask So if you do have any questions for me regarding this transfer 
of Yak or any other transfers that you want me to go through which are rumoured at the minute. If you do want to do that then obviously do drop the comment in the comment section and also do share and subscribe uh, the channel obviously with, with your friends so obviously we can get as many people as possible to watch the stream. But obviously um, there was a really great article written in the Croydon Advertiser the other day just explaining uh, what his qualities are so if I find that I'll show that to you uh, later on in the stream because I personally think it was a really great summary in terms of what Yak could bring to the side I think um, based on what I read in this article it seemed quite positive so I think obviously we don't know yet how good he can be but based on what I read in this article it seemed quite promising he looks like uh, quite a good uh, addition for Palace in the squad so do comment below um, yeah <laughs> do comment below what you think Earth Changing has said he looks like Neymar. Yeah, you're not the first person to say that. I've seen a lot of people comment that on Twitter today. Um, and personally, I do agree with that. He does look a little bit not like Neymar. You know, obviously, he's a centre-back, so he's not going to quite have the skills of Neymar. But if he can still score a few goals from set pieces like he's done for, a, for his Polish side, that would be quite good as well. So just, obviously, like I said, do comment below with your views of him, whether you do think he'd okay, be so a good it's the January transfer window. With Palace. So that was just the advert playing on the Croydon Advertiser website. So I'm just looking for this article um, that they posted the other day, which really just is from a Polish uh, journalist just going through what he would obviously bring to Palace and obviously whether he would be able to fit in into the Premier League. And basically, having had a skim through it the other day, it seems like he'd probably be one of these players who can probably adapt well to the Premier League purely because of the experience he's got and because of you know the the quality in the uh, yeah the quality he's got basically the yeah the natural ability let's say so just looking for this article here and as soon as i do that i'll have obviously have that up on the screen um so you guys can have a read through it Uh, got a question here can he play in any other positions so as far as i know yak is a central defender i don't know if he can play uh, on the left hand side or the right hand side of defense and i don't really know if he can play in you know central midfield whether that be in a dm role or slightly further forward but based on what i've heard already the fact that he's strong he's quite tall quite physical i personally think his probably his best position will be at center back and when you consider he's played there for the majority of his career i think we could say that Actually, that's probably his position he's going to play at Palace. And if you look at players in the squad at the minute, obviously we've got quite a lot of cover at centre-back, but most of it's out injured. But I think that, you know, Yak will be the long-term replacement for Damien Delaney. So do comment below uh, what you think or who you think he'll replace in the squad. And if you think that he'll be a squad player as opposed to someone who, who will be in and around the squad all the time. So do comment below uh, with your views about him there. So Eagle Highlights has put thoughts on Rakip. Now obviously if you weren't listening to or you weren't tuned into yesterday's live stream, I did basically just go through and discuss him as a signing. You know, I showed a few highlights of his career and basically just went through at how I thought that because he's 21 years old, he looks like he's played really well in the Swedish league. Yes, it's a big jump to the Premier League, but I think actually he's got the quality and he could do um, a good job in the Premier League. And actually later on in this live stream, I'll go and give you some additional transfer news regarding him which you might find quite interesting. But thoughts on him as a whole, obviously it's on a loan, so we're not having to spend too much money. But I think based on what I've seen, he does look like a quality player already. And when you consider that Roy Hodgson obviously worked in the Swedish league, yes, it was a few years ago, quite well, quite a long time ago. He may still have the context there to obviously find out uh, talented players like that. Did Palace scouts see him a few months ago? Yes, if you do, I'm going to show you his interview in a minute, which is in Polish, but it's got subtitles. So if you look back at the official um, interview with him, he does say that about a month ago, the scouts came to the game. He was obviously informed of that. And obviously, in the last sort of two, three weeks, they've obviously approached him and said, uh, would you want to move to the Premier League? So obviously, Palace scouts, people have been criticising the scouting network for quite a few years now. But actually, this may be... Um, you know, a good, a good signing for us because obviously the scouts have seen something in him 
And although people criticise us for not having a good scouting network, the fact that we've actually now found found a player through it, obviously, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully he he turns out to be uh, quite a good player for Palace. But I'm just going. I can't find this Croydon advertiser um, article, which basically just summarises him um, as a player and sort of his playing style. But I'm gonna keep keep looking for it here just to see see if I can find it because it, for me looking at it, I thought it was a really really good read. Um, but yeah, like I've said already, do comment below with uh, your thoughts of it. Uh, whether you think he's, whether you think that Yak's a good signing or not. So Danny Boy has commented he was also watching the stream yesterday. He said that he's more excited by Yak than Ratit for him. Uh, personally, for me, yeah, I think that the fact that Ratit, oh, sorry, the fact that um, Yak's played at a slightly higher level in terms of the Polish league in comparison to the Swedish league, and the fact that Yak's got a little bit more international experience in terms of the first team football, I think that yes, he, Yak does actually look like a more promising player for me. But I still think that both signings in terms of Yak and Ratip, or sorry, Ratip. I think they're both actually good signings and hopefully, obviously they're registered in time to play against West Ham. So hopefully, even if they're on the bench, we can obviously, you know, have a look and see what sort of qualities they can bring to the side. So we've got a question here from O South London. He said, that the, what, what is the most important area to strengthen next? For me personally, obviously, there's now just done over a week to go till transfer deadline day. And for me, there's two players in particular or two positions that we need to strengthen. And that has got to be the striker. We've got to give a bit of competition for Christian Menteke and obviously a goalkeeper. And for me, the fact that we've now got these two signings done um, quite early on, well, not early on, but midway through the window in the last sort of few days, I think we're definitely going to get a striker probably be last minute like always it'll be on transfer deadline day which i'm also going to do a live stream on so we'll get a we'll probably get a player a striker on transfer deadline day and maybe in the next few days or once again on transfer deadline day we'll also you know we'll also get you know a, a goalkeeper as well as a striker but for me if we had to get one more player it would be a striker but if we are going to get players you know if we're going to get more than one then it's got to be a striker and a goalkeeper for me Obviously, Earth Changing has said that has he done his uh, homework on our rivals Brighton? Yes, he did. The interview, which I'm going to show you in a minute, he actually does talk about the Brighton rivalry, and he basically said that there's loads of clubs in South London, but he understands that there's a bigger rivalry with Brighton. So that was great to see from a new signing. You know, the fact that he's actually done a bit of research, so that was uh, good to see. The fact that he's got the passion for it as well. The fact that he said that he couldn't wait to play against them, that was also great to see as well. Uh, got a question here from um, O South London again. Uh, should we make a move for Mitrovic? Personally, for me, I think on his day, Mitrovic can be a good striker. And I think he probably, because of, obviously, um, Newcastle are trying to get funds in. Obviously, they will probably be looking to sell a few players. And Mitrovic isn't playing, so he'll probably get sold. And I personally think maybe for £10 million we could get him. But I think the fact that we're linked with the likes of Barbacar and Dembele from Celtic, I think that I'd rather get them players purely because Mitrovic has been a bit hot and cold, whereas the other two are a lot, a lot younger and obviously have got a little bit more potential. And I personally think for me, out of like the likes of Barbacar and Dembele, I think we should personally go forth and get Dembele. But do comment below what you think. And also, O South London, do comment below whether you think or you whether you would be happy with the signing of Mitrovic to Palace.
So like I said, uh, just said there, if you do want to comment below any of our transfer targets which you think that Palace should go in for and obviously should be linked with, then do of course do um, you know put them in the comment section below. If you've got a question here from Danny Boy, do you see Wilf as a winger or a striker? For me personally, I think that Wilf can do a, a job in both positions. But for me, he is an out-and-out -out winger. You know, he's got that sheer pace and skill. So for me, he should be playing out wide because he's got that ability to cut inside. And obviously, you know, he's got that bit of magic to create something. So for me, I think that he's much better as a winger. But as a second option, as a striker, I don't see any problem with him. So if we do get injuries... I don't have a problem with him playing at striker. I just think that he's much, much better uh, playing in a more uh, out-wide position. But do comment below what you think as well, what you think his best position is and where you would like to see him play for the rest of the season as well. So obviously Danny Boyd replied with a comment saying that he thinks the defence is now done and he obviously would like to see us get a goalkeeper, a decent goalkeeper like Trap. Personally for me, I think that's a totally good thing to have. You know, we were linked to a Trap at the beginning of the window. I personally think maybe Trap was a bit ambitious and obviously he's come out and said apparently that he wouldn't want to be in a relegation battle. But I think that certainly if we can target someone like Trap, he'd be a great addition. But for me, looking at the players that are available... There's this Swedish goalkeeper called Robin uh, Olsen, I believe his name is. We've been linked with him. He looked quite decent in terms of the World Cup qualifiers. And the fact that he stopped Italy from going to the World Cup was quite amazing. And the fact that he's now, he's actually got the same agent as Rakip, obviously suggests that maybe there was something in the deal that if we signed one player, we may have to sign the other. So it'd be interesting to see who we get. And much like what I said a few minutes ago, it would probably go down to deadline day. So we'll probably have to wait till deadline day. Um, to make a few more signings so we've made these two early ones who are both you know young uh, promising players and I think towards the end of the window uh, especially transfer deadline day we'll probably go forth and you know make the main marquee signing Danny Boy also said that uh, he feels that Wilf is a winger for him yep totally agree I think I think we can all agree that Wilf is much better when he plays out wide and we looked at the, if you look at the game such as the Watford game as soon as he was moved out wide, he changed the game. He had an impact on the game, which just shows that actually that is his, you know, that is his better possession uh, position. O South London also said that should Delaney get a coaching role at the end of the season, I personally don't see any problem with that. But I think that the fact that Roy Hodgson has got his contact, I just think that Roy Hodgson would probably prefer to bring in his own men. So really, for me, I think that maybe Delaney might get a coaching role. Maybe let's say like the under 17s for example. But I personally think for me, he probably will go into coaching, but maybe not necessarily at Palace at the minute, purely because of obviously Roy Hodgson has got the people that he wants around the club. But I, d I don't see any reason why, the fact that he was such a good leader, I don't see a reason why he couldn't go on to be, you know, a good, a good basically um, a good uh, coach for the team. So o o South London also said that he's not convinced by Adair or Aloha, uh, Zoa, but he would much prefer Dembele or Barbaca. I uh, totally agree, you know, Adair is 31 years old, hasn't scored in ages, got bad injury records, so personally for me, it's a no-go, you know, the fact that we've got so many injuries, we don't need another injury-prone striker. Aloha from uh, Leicester, yes, he's been good and he's been decent in the last few seasons, but he's not exactly going to get us loads of goals and help us to move up the league, so for me, the fact that he's quite inconsistent is a no-go for me. And in terms of Dembele and Barbacar, Dembele, it's been quite made quite obvious for me from uh, Celtic coaches and obviously from the manager Brendan Rodgers himself that his head's his head's been turned, and you know he'd prefer he would prefer you know to move on now. He thinks that he's 
had enough time at Celtic to move on. And personally for me, I think that Dembele, he's done it in the Championship. I think he'd be a good addition for us. And also he's 21 years old, so he's really, really young. And in terms of Barbacar, he's 24 years old. Obviously this season he hasn't played a lot because he's come off the bench, but he's still scored about four, maybe six goals he scored off the bench and still got a few assists. So actually, even though he hasn't played quite a lot, he's still got quite a lot of quality in terms of coming off the bench. The Dunny Boy said, should we offer Bakary Sacco a new deal? At the moment, I'm just going to wait for the January transfer window to go, to go, obviously go through. Because if he, if we get new signings in and Bakary Sacco goes back to the bench and he stops having an impact, then I don't see why we should give him a contract. But if he carries on this form and proves that actually he's actually worth a new contract, because up until a few weeks ago, he was n we, w we wanted him to be sold. And until we started scoring goals, you know, against Leicester, for example, before he started doing that, everyone wanted him gone. So, yes, if he carries on this form, then I don't see any reason why he shouldn't get a new deal. Earth Changing said that Will Palace buy Tim Fossey Mensa. I don't think... I, I personally think that because um, Valencia is getting quite old at Man United, I don't think that Fossey Mensa will be allowed to go to Palace purely because Fossey Mensa is developing well at Palace and will be uh, a great player for Man United. But I do think that if Man United continue spending the amount of money they do, they'll probably buy another player in and obviously Fossey Mensa may have the chance to go to, go to Palace and I've seen a few people suggest on Twitter that apparently we are looking to get him but I think at the minute I think we're going to wait to survive this season and even if and if we do well um, towards the end of this season and we get qu a quite high finish I don't see why Fossey Mensa would want, wouldn't want to stay because he's got the passion but for me I think in terms of Man United they're quite lucky because he's going to be a perfect player uh, to replace Valencia. Um, do I think Benteke will leave? Personally, I think he may leave in the summer. For me, it's obviously definitely he's not leaving in this window. Maybe he might leave in the summer, but I still think if we get him in the right system, if we supply him and if he can get his confidence back, I personally think he'd be a great striker for us. So I personally, for me, I don't see any reason why we should sell him. Um, final question here before I go on, because I found that article from the Croydon Advertiser. Before I go on to that, um, the squad number here for Yak. The club didn't announce one yesterday after the uh, Rakip deal. They didn't announce one after this one. So personally for me, if they are going to be on the bench against West Ham midweek, I think they'll probably announce it before the game. So unless we um, do any more deals in the next few days, I personally don't think we'll announce the numbers until the next, you know, until we play West Ham. So probably give it next week and we probably would have announced them by then because if they're going to play, we have to obviously announce the number. So really for me, I don't know the numbers. But for me, um, for me, or looking at the squad, I think that actually 1 to 14 is full up. So any number above 14, other than the ones that are taken, obviously are the sort of numbers that he could go forth and take. So do comment below what number you think he will have. And also what number you also think that Rakip might have as well. just to go through the article that I've eventually found on the Croydon Advertiser website and it basically just goes through uh, what we can expect um, from Yak uh, this season but in terms of you know quite a lot of stuff I've already said already obviously this was written a few days ago so it's saying that he's expected to be announced as a Palace player he's now been announced and obviously he's moved uh, from the Polish league um, outfit uh, Zagby Lubin obviously and he's obviously got subbed off or haven't been snubbed by German side Inga Snot on Friday so obviously it was between Palace and this German side and obviously he's chosen the chance to go to the Premier League and obviously rejected them because really for me I think you know it's the Premier League is a big law and obviously as a player if you've got a German team in the Bundesliga or the Premier League side I think the law of the Premier League will obviously make you want to go there but in terms of other teams that have been interested you know Sam, uh, Sampdoria in Italy and United States outfit Philadelphia, Philadelphia Union have also been uh, keen on him over the summer but like I've already mentioned as well obviously he's he's quite young 24 years old he's already got two caps for the Polish national team and he's quite tall standing at six foot four so in terms of being a central defender he's obviously got the height which is a good thing so at, uh, you know as his younger age obviously before he went into professional football he was obviously trained up to be a swimmer but obviously there was at some point in his career where he thought actually I'm going to do football because I'd much rather do that than swimming. And obviously he decided to 
uh, pursue this career in football and certainly for me and obviously what the art written in the article here it was a good decision because he's decided to not be a swimmer be a footballer and now he's got the chance to play in the Premier League so really um, you know it looks like a good decision from him but obviously with him moving to the Premier League it gives him an even better chance of actually getting to the World Cup in Russia this season with Poland because if he can get reg if he can get regular games in the Premier League which is a much higher standard league um, than the Polish League that may help him in terms of experience in terms of getting into that Polish squad uh, in the summer. So obviously the Croydon advertiser, I think it was Mark Ritson who wrote this article, but they decided to get their low down on Yak and they spoke to the um, the foot or the Polish journalist uh, Mace, Macy, I think it's magic, I think it's pronounced, uh, Lucas of Sport TVP Premier League. So obviously that's a, a Premier League sports outlet in Poland. But obviously this is what he said, so this is just quoting what he said. So he said he's a 23-year-old centre-back and during his career in Eskolonia, he played for Zyberg Lupa uh, and that's what he said. When he was young, he trained to be a swimmer and came ninth in the Polish Championships but decided not to continue the sport. So once again, they're just saying that he's played for a few clubs but obviously before that, he obviously had the choice to be a swimmer and he obviously didn't choose it. And obviously, I've had someone comment this already but there's been loads of jokes in and around Poland that he actually... His face is very similar to Neymar's, which I can obviously agree with. I think he does look uh, a little bit like Neymar. And in terms of last November, he played for the first time in the Polish national team. Uh, manager Adam Nartwood considered him as a player who could go to the World Cup, but for now he wouldn't say that he he said that he'd be on the bench rather than in the first team squad. So much like what I said a minute ago, the fact that he's moving to the Premier League, which is a higher uh, level league it will give him a better chance in terms of getting into that Polish squad uh, for the World Cup because at the moment he's he's obviously a good quality player one of the best defenders in the Polish league but he's only going to be on the bench for the national team so by stepping up to the Premier League and obviously by increasing his standards he's of course you know going to have a better chance of actually getting into the squad now obviously he's played in quite a few systems obviously we play at the moment a 4-4-2 but he's played with three centre-backs um, against Uruguay that's when obviously Yak came in he done all right against Uruguay so showing that he can not only play in a four-back system but also in a three-back so if we ever wanted to change our systems uh, we could do so um, obviously he went on to say that he thinks Yak also prefers uh, prefers a system with three centre-backs and he of often likes to play or he often played in that position for his former club so although he can play in a four-man defence, he can also play in a three-man defence, which shows that actually, if Palace want to adapt the way we play, we can. Goes on again to say that he's left-footed, so that's quite good, because you've got someone like James Tompkins, who I believe is right-footed, so bringing in another left-footer into the side will be good. And another question I got earlier was, could he play on the left-hand side? Because he's left-footed, if worse comes to worse, I don't see why he couldn't move um, move out wide and he says here that he thinks the main quality is that he plays with the ball very well and also he's very good in the air so that's what you want in the Premier League you need players who are physical and uh, that are good in the air and obviously here he's not only good in the air and physical but also he's good at playing the ball from the back which if he plays alongside James Tompkins who's a very good ball playing centre back then actually I think they could go along quite nicely and obviously for months now there's been quite a lot of rumours about his transfer and during the summer or the summer transfer window just gone, he was linked with a few Serie A clubs, uh, especially Gonias. But obviously, he decided to stay loyal to his Polish club. And obviously, now he's found himself at Palace. And obviously, this week, so on Friday when this article was written, he was set to go to the Bundesliga side. But he decided not to join them and instead flew to London to obviously have his medical for Palace. And obviously... Um, Palace, we, we've had a few injuries, you know, like Dumbu, Sacco, Scott Dan have obviously got quite serious injuries and not going to be back. Well, Dan's not going to be back till the end of the season and Sacco will probably be back beginning maybe the end of February. So we needed a bit more cover at centre-back, obviously, after these injuries. And certainly, yes, it'll be a big step, um, big step up for Yak in terms of moving up to a bigger quality uh, league. But, you know, hopefully he'd be raring to go and actually just give us a little bit more cover and quality into the side. But like what I've said already, he's proven himself on the international stage and hopefully uh, given a chance uh, at Palace will actually be a really good thing, a really ideal thing, thing for his career because by giving him the chance to move up a level, that's only going to develop him further. 
And obviously, the article goes on to say that his um, his medical is expected on Monday, and it's an, it's expected to be announced on Monday. Obviously, having completed the medical at the weekend, but obviously it was announced today on Tuesday because I personally think the reason they didn't announce it yesterday is purely because they wanted to announce the Rakib deal, and they didn't want to announce two plays on the same day. And obviously, there's another art link below uh, to another article, but that's basically Roy Hodgson saying after the Arsenal 4-1 defeat, basically saying that um, these two players are going to join Palace in the next 24 hours, so there's not really anything too much to read into there. So that was just a really interesting insight, obviously into his style of play, you know, his career in terms of used to being a, a professional swimmer, decided to carry on his career in football, and actually it seemed to work out for the best because now he's obviously in the Premier League. But do comment below what you think about the transfer and whether you do think that he will be a success for Palace. So obviously just to go back um, to a few of the comments before I go on and give you the official interview. Um, so obviously he said the sound's gone but the sound should be back now. Yeah, I think there was just a glitch um, in the OBS software. Obviously O South London has said, do we think we're short of central defenders because of the injuries to Kabai and Loftus-Cheek? Personally for me, Lo um, Loftus-Cheek's injury, it, depending on if he has to have surgery, if he doesn't have surgery then he could be back in a few weeks. If he does have surgery then of course, then he'll be out for more or less the whole of the season. And Kabai's injury was only a sprained ankle, so he should be back in. He should be back for West Ham, but if not, he should be back uh, for the games after that. So after West Ham, we've got Newcastle, Everton and Tottenham, so he should be back uh, for them games. And I just think the reason we brought in Rakip um, was mainly because we needed a bit more cover. So if, you know, Kabai, Kabai's injury is long term, then of course we've got someone to come back in. How much game time do I think that Yak will get when Sacco's back? Personally, for me, it just depends because obviously I don't see Yak getting straight in at the deep end in the Premier League. I think he'll give him a few weeks, maybe months to get used to it. But I personally think maybe a few um, appearances off the bench or even just playing alongside Sacco or Tompkins and just giving him that experience could help him. So personally, for me, I think that our best partnership is Sacco and Tompkins. But I think that Jack maybe, or sorry, Yak, I don't see why he couldn't come off the bench and obviously have an impact there. And I don't think he's going to be completely restricted in terms of his chances. Obviously, other questions here. Do I do I think that Wickham will retire because of his constant injury? Personally, for me, he seems to be working hard. So I think he may be back next season, obviously, because we've got other injuries and we can't risk relying on someone like um, Wickham to score our goal. So I think Wickham will be back next season. And I don't think he'll retire. I think he, if he do, if he gets another long-term injury with Palace, I think they'll probably release him. And he can do, you know, he could still do, um, you know, a great job for a lower league, a lower league team, or even a team in the Championship, like he did for um for Sunderland. Because personally, for me, I think Connor Wickham on his day when he's not injured, he's a quality player. But obviously, he keep getting, keep keeps getting these injuries, which are obviously disrupting his career. So personally, for me, I don't think he'll retire, but maybe he might have to leave Palace. In terms of actually getting a few more uh, opportunities uh, playing. O South London also said, do I see Zaha leaving in the summer? Simple answer is no. And personally for me, if we do stay up, I don't see any reason why he should move. Because at the moment, he's liking he's liking it at Palace. He's obviously signed that five-year uh, contract. So I personally think, and the fact that he's liking his game games here. And he likes playing here. I don't see why he should move. And even if... You know, even if we don't do well and we still manage to stay up on the skin of our teeth, I still think he will stay because he's got the passion. It's his local club, so I don't see any reason why he should leave. And the fact that he said that Roy Hodgson is probably the best manager he's worked under probably just gives us a, a suggestion that actually maybe, you know, Roy Hodgson can actually develop Zaha even more as a player. South London said that it's great to see the charity work uh, that Yak does. Yep, Yak said he, he's... Um, I think he, he's an ambassador for a diabetes charity. That's obviously great to see. And it's nice to see that we've got a player who not only has community links, but is looking to do work for the charities. So hopefully uh, for the Palace for Life Foundation, he can obviously do his bit to help there. i uh, got here an, uh, you know, a comment here. Trust in Roy. Trust the scouting network. At the beginning of the thing, I said exactly the same. You know, We don't know much about Yak or Rakip, 
but we've just got to trust that the scouting network have found these players we've seen that they're good and now we've brought them to the Premier League we can see something in them which obviously would be valuable in the Premier League Danny Boy said when is slot back uh, I don't know for me it Roy Hodgson basically made it sound like it's quite a long-term injury so for me it'll probably be if he doesn't miss the whole of the season or the rest of the season it will probably be back towards the end of it so for the last two or three games who do I think Palace's top scorer will be this season um, personally for me the fact that Luka Milivojevic is scoring loads of goals and penalties this season it could be him but for me I think that Bakary Sacco if providing we don't bring too much competition in in January I think that maybe Bakary Sacco could be our top goal scorer this season but for me I think that maybe yeah maybe Bakary Sacco or maybe even Zaha Zaha might be able to catch up so obviously before I go on to read some of more of your more of your questions I'm just going to give you now uh, the interview or uh, Yak's first interview as a Palace player and like I've said already it is in Polish so obviously you're just going to have to read uh, the subtitles but do enjoy Yarek, welcome to Sellers Park how do you feel about joining Crystal Palace Football Club? Przede wszystkim jest to dla mnie spełnienie marzeń, bo Liga Angielska to liga, którą oglądałem od małego i zawsze chciałem się tutaj znaleźć. Jestem bardzo zadowolony i mam nadzieję, że pomogę tutaj Crystal Palace w tym, aby utrzymali się w lidze, a także być może osiągnęli jakiś większy sukces. When did you first hear that Crystal Palace were interested in signing you? Około 2-3 tygodnie temu e, dostałem taką pierwszą informację. E, po kilku dniach spotkałem się w Polsce z przedstawicielami klubu. E, omawialiśmy strategię, omawialiśmy to, jaki klub ma plan na mnie, e, na moją przyszłość. E, natomiast podczas tego spotkania dali mi do zrozumienia, że obserwują mnie już od wielu miesięcy i tak naprawdę ten ruch jest z ich strony bardzo przemyślany. And what do you know about the club? Przede wszystkim e, no jest to klub e, z południa e, Londynu. E, trener ma, ma wybitnego trenera, e, który e, wcześniej był e, trenerem reprezentacji Anglii, czyli e, Roy Hodgson. E, wiem, że <coughs> stadion nazywa się Selhurst Park. Ma pojemność około 25 tysięcy e, kibiców e, i co najważniejsze przy tym Praktycznie na każdym meczu jest komplet i to, to jest chyba najfajniejsze w tym wszystkim. Myślę, że y, z takich informacji jeszcze ważnych, które też gdzieś tam nabyłem, to to, że y, mimo tego, że jest wiele klubów w Londynie, to najważniejsze derby pod względem kibicowskim y, są y, z Brighton. Także y, to, to jest jakby y, najważniejsze miejsce dla mnie. I, y, I mam nadzieję, że będę mógł kiedyś e, wygrać taki mecz. Looks like you've done your research. Um, can you tell us a bit about your career so far and what kind of player you are? Przede wszystkim e, jestem, z, jestem chłopakiem z, z małej miejscowości w Polsce. Zaczynałem e, w bardzo powiedzmy biednym klubie, e, z którego przedostałem się tak naprawdę przez mojego kolegę, któremu zazdrościłem, że poszedł gdzieś wyżej. E, po czym Tam po kilku fajnych występach zostałem zauważony przez Zagłębie Lubin, z którym też od początku nie było mi łatwo, bo na początku byłem zawodnikiem rezerw, powoli przewijałem się do pierwszej drużyny. Też od nie od razu byłem podstawowym zawodnikiem i często zdarzało się tak, że przez kilka meczów w ogóle nie znajdowałem się w składzie. Co, co więcej mogę powiedzieć, na, na pewno ten rok był dla mnie bardzo zwariowany, bo zaczęło się źle. Zaczęło się od kontuzji, zaczęło się od walki z czasem na młodzieżowym już ostatni sezon był bardzo udany. No i przychodzę tutaj na nowe wyzwanie. Yeah, you mentioned playing for Poland there. With the World Cup coming up, is playing in the Premier League a good chance to showcase your skills ahead of that? So I do apologise for that, there was obviously a problem with my internet and obviously the interview did cut short. But obviously as you probably just heard from the interview and some of the highlights from it, the fact that he talked about the rivalry with Brighton was great to see, the fact that he'd done a bit of research and the fact that he's talking about the fact that he's come from his Polish town, 
the same town as Latin Ibrahim. Oh, sorry, no, not the same town as that. And that was uh, our Rakib yesterday. But the fact that he's talking about he's come from this town, he's managed to build up his career. It's, it's quite great to see. And the fact that he's got the passion to play in front of all the fans at Sellers Park, that's obviously great to see as well. So before I go on to answer some more of your questions, I'm just going to go through something sort of similar to Sky Sports News in terms of just going through some of our transfers and obviously some of the rumours that are around at the minute. So obviously, as you can see in the ink column, when we obviously brought in uh, Edri um, Raul Rakip yesterday, obviously from uh, Benfica on loan. Obviously, we brought in uh, Yasuf Lach. Yak uh, today obviously on uh, for about three million pound is the or three uh, million euros which is the rumored fee and in terms of the only out there hasn't been any more outs since yesterday so Keshi Anderson to Swindon Town is the only out so far obviously going to uh, Swindon for an undisclosed fee but in terms of some new transfer rumors obviously Palace have been um, offered a dare from Inter Milan uh, just a simple loan with a uh, offer to buy him in the summer if it all goes well but obviously He's sort of more keen to go to play for Zenit in the Russian league, who obviously uh, coached by Roberto Mancini. So he'd rather play for him than Hodgson. And personally for me, yes, Adir on his day can be a good player, but for me, I don't think he's got the quality that Palace need at the minute. In terms of Rakip still, and I talked about this earlier, there is a surprise thing about his deal. Yes, Benfica signed him for free, but there is an agreement in his, trans in his uh, loan deal that actually... If Palace do want to buy him in the summer, it is only 10 million euros, and well, that's the rumoured fee. So, obviously, Benfica have signed him for free and are going to make profit on, on him if they do sell him. But I still think that this is a good thing because if he does perform well for Palace and if Roy Hodgson turns him into a good player, at least we've got that option to buy him back uh, later on if we do need to. Now, another thing here, the final thing really that's been quite recent, there hasn't really been any other transfer news is the fact that Cholton Athletic's loan move for Salih Kaikai may have been a snag it seems to have broken down and actually not much really seems to be happening about that so do comment below um, what you think of any of these transfers and whether you do think that actually Salih Kaikai maybe it would be good for him to go to another club purely because he can just get a bit more game time and obviously that will help him to develop more as a player. So in terms of Sully Kai Kai's obviously loan move to Cholton, I've just found this article here from Kent Live just to go through obviously uh, why it may not have happened. Obviously I don't know too much into it because obviously I'm not really an expert in this field. But obviously it says here Cholton Flex loan move for Sully Kai Kai from Crystal Palace may have hit a snag. Um, Kent Live understands. Uh, the addicts have been in talks with the Eagles over the 22 year old attacker since last week and met the players. Uh, met the player and representatives on Friday. Obviously, that was Friday just gone. The deal was expected to go through before the weekend in the hope that he could be involved in the match day squad to face Walsall. Obviously, that didn't obviously go ahead. Cholton boss Carl Robertson said to the media on Saturday post match that he was going to return uh, to attempt to seal the deal on Sunday with the Attics. Addicts fans expecting an announcement today. Obviously, this article was written a few days ago. Obviously, this has not been the case, however, and the Kent Live understands that talks have now gone from hot to cold and it may not even happen now. So maybe Sully Kai Kai may even end up staying at Palace. There's clearly a bit more work to do, but there's still a chance that the deal uh, could be off for the time being, but it may be revisited at an another time, which basically just says if, you know, if they choose to pursue it even further, then of course they can come back uh, whenever and obviously try and, you know, try and get the deal done again. Just to go through the final bit here, obviously Palace have had loan offers for Kai Kai from League One and Championship sides all season and it seems that Cholton have done enough to get to the front of the queue. So obviously Cholton looks like their preferred uh, destination for him. Two Championship sides in for him last week. I think it was Brentford as well who wanted to buy him and obviously another loan deal there but obviously nothing has been happening. Whether one of those clubs has come up with a late offer or Palace's first team want to hold on for him for potential cover is not quite known at this stage. But a deal is now expected to materialise imminently as previously hoped. So 
obviously it's not expected to actually happen now purely because there's something happening with the deal here but obviously a bit here about Charlton's loans we don't really need to worry about that but in terms of that it looks like now that maybe sorry Kai Kai may not be going to Charlton as we all originally thought but do comment below what you think about that and whether you do think it will be good for his development So I am aware the stream should be glitching a bit now. I think my internet's just gone off, um, gone off completely, and my stream keeps cutting out. But do keep with me. Do keep putting in comments there, and obviously do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. But obviously before I go on and you know stop this for the night, obviously and end the live stream here, just to read through your final few questions here before I go forth and end the stream. Um, so. O, o South London has said that I don't agree about the buyback clause with Bakib as we move quicker with signing for nothing. I, I totally agree with that. I think um, Benfica have done a fantastic job in terms of getting him on a free. sending. So I don't know exactly what's happening with my stream now. I think the internet, um, yeah, the internet's gone quite slow at the minute. So just before it cuts out completely and it destroys my stream, just to go through few more of your questions yeah rip stream yep the the internet has totally crashed and it's really really slow uh at the minute um just to read